Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Michelle and this is Phrase Foliage. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope you're having a lovely day today. And yes, what is behind me but my IKEA Redsta cabinet, which has been not really dealt with in a few months, if I'm being honest. Um, so yes, today's video is going to be a IKEA Redsta tour slash let's look at my plans, how they're doing, slash let me just give you guys some updates of what's been going on behind me in my Ikea Resta cabinet. So that is going to be today's video. If that is something that you think is interesting or you'd like to watch or you have some plant chores and are looking for a video that you can have on in the background uh, while you do plant chores, stick around. But before we get into today's video, I do want to take a moment to talk about today's sponsor and that is Ana Luisa. Now, if you don't know who Ana Luisa is, Ana Luisa is a jewelry brand that curates high-end gorgeous pieces with our wallets and planet in mind. Ana Luisa is climate neutral certified while also being 100% water and carbon neutral, all the while offering stunning gorgeous jewelry starting at $39. Now I am wearing some new pieces from Ana Luisa today that I wanted to show you guys, which are these earrings right here. So I currently have on the Rux Minis as well as the Crescent Opal earrings. And as you can tell, they are both gold. What's not to love, gold jewelry is chef's kiss, but I just love how firstly light and like non-existent these earrings feel. I will say I'm someone that has extremely sensitive ears. If I put in jewelry that's not actually pure gold or pure, pure silver, my ears do start to react. I've been wearing these earrings for about five, six days and my ears feel like there is nothing in them. They are seriously the most comfortable earring. They're so light. You can barely tell they're there, but they add so much flair and personality to any outfit or you know, you can just dress yourself up if you're wearing your pajamas and just put on a pair of earrings and you feel, you feel like you have your life together. So I truly do love my Ana Luisa earrings. I do have another pair, which I can show you here. These are the Adeline studs. They are very cute, very small, almost Daisy-esque. And of course, if you are a follower of the channel, you know I love plants. What's not to love about some super cute Daisy studs? Again, a huge thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. If you do want to check out their website, which I highly encourage you do, um, I will have the link linked down in my description box down below. And you can also use code FREE10 for 10% off of your purchase with Ana Luisa. Um, let me know if you do end up purchasing anything for yourself uh, down in the comments below, but let's get right into the video. So in terms of orientation and setup not much has changed so if you've watched my former video on my ikea setup or my cabinet setup you probably recognize a lot of this starting with my favorite little corner which is the hoya corner um and again some of these are newer some you may remember from my last video but like this guy is just a hoya um princess crimson prince sorry hoya crimson queen that I have been uh, propagating for some time. So this actually came from this queen right here in the back. Um, you can tell it's a queen by again, the variegation being on the outer edge versus a princess the variegation tends to be, oop, will this reach? I have a crimson princess right out of frame, but won't be able to see, but variegation for the queen is on the outer edge of the leaf. Um, this has been propagating for some time and I do have some roots. I don't want to disturb the sphagnum too much, but they're super shallow still. So I have just been leaving this propagation in its cup right in this little corner and humidity is pretty good. Um, I'm going to refrain from touching the Bella for now. I do have some Hoya Abavada propagations, which again, I took from my mama plant, which is just out of frame. But these have been doing really good. Um, I do have to take it out of this just like regular acrylic little divider thing. Um, I do have to pop uh, pop these up. So maybe that'll be part of this video if I get the energy to do so. It was the first leaf that I put in when I propagated. And now we have a cute little abovada plant basically. So let me, I'm gonna stick this up on top for right now so I can get to the girls in the back. One of my crimson queens that was gifted to me by my good friend, Melissa. So. Uh, yeah, this guy was a birthday present and has been growing really beautifully. Um, again, this is where the little propagation came from, but she's super pretty. Um, look at how just like pink the, the leaf is there, that new leaf, and then how pink just like the stems are. I love Hoya. Hoya are absolutely gorgeous. 
Um, this one probably needs to be repotted. Roots aren't showing through yet, but she's super pretty. And it's just really interesting to see how the variation in Hoya kind of change from plant to plant. Like for example, I do have a, another Hoya Crimson, what was sold to me as a Crimson Queen, but it definitely looks like a Chelsea, um, kind of, and it does have some like weird crinkling. So this is a very fun Hoya, um, or both of them, I should say. I wouldn't probably pot these in the same pot together because at least in my eyes, they look very different. Um, but again, very fun, whatever they are, they are Hoya and I really enjoy them. Um, these in the back do look more like a Hoya Crimson Queen that we would normally see. Um, but again, very interesting. I do have a full white leaf on the bottom right there, but either way, beautiful plants. This is my gorgeous girl, my Hoya Bella. Um, she is so long on this one vine. I do have to propagate her. That is part of my to-do list, um, but she's just been so beautiful and has been trailing so just beautifully. I don't want to cut it. Um, again, I just do have one like stick of a Hoya in here. So if I propagate, obviously it's just going to make this pot more full, which is the goal. Um, but I am refraining from propagating just because it looks like I do have a bloom. So I don't know if this will actually bloom. I haven't had any Hoya blooms ever. Um, this would be my first, but she hasn't flowered yet. Keep bringing her closer to the camera to see how if it'll actually focus. But yes, if this actually blooms, I will be so excited. So I have been refraining from doing much to it. Um, in the back over here, I'm not quite sure why I still have this. I was trying to propagate a spider plant, which, oh my gosh, it actually has some roots on it, which I thought this was a lost cause. So never mind. I will keep that in there and just refill this with some more water. Um, as you can see, it's dirty, but this has just like leftover prop gunk on the bottom plus some liquid art water. So that's why it's a little bit brown. Um, but that's actually exciting. I haven't checked on that propagation in a while. So I'm glad I did that today. Um, I do have my Hoya Australis right here. I'm going to refrain from removing her just because she's tucked in underneath this little acrylic shelf in this little magnetic hanging like basket thing, you could say. Um, but what I am going to do is just show you guys how much this plant has been growing. So this is one whole vine, uh, like a long tendril of the Hoya Australis. Um, so she is working on some tiny leaves, if you can see them on this vine, so I'm trying to be really delicate. But yeah, she has been loving cabinet life. I think she's also been loving, um, liquid dirt life. So I've just been trying to, uh, I've just been trying to put her a little runner wherever it can sit comfortably. Um, she does have a second runner on the bottom. It's a bit smaller, so it's a bit more easy to manage. Uh, but I do think I'm going to chop this one soon and propagate it because the growth are getting, you know, quite small. Um, but this one's also been really fun. Again, it was, Hoyas are a little bit like deceiving in the beginning, but once they actually start growing, they are some of my favorite plants to just observe and watch grow. So 10 out of 10 recommend getting some Hoya if you don't. And there's so many different varieties that you really can't get bored of like a Hoya. So I will always recommend Hoya. Okay, twisted you to the side, but... While I am going through my cabinet, I am trying again to keep this as true as I can. I'm actually gonna stick the Apovada propagations back where they were so I don't forget about them. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to keep this as true as I can and just to show you guys the reality of propagations and just like my cabinet itself. Um, one thing annoying, my humidity meter is like broken so I don't ever know what the actual humidity is in here. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it gives me a full readout, but it's just little things like that where it's like, I see the issue and I just, I don't have the energy or the, the drive to work on it. I'm just going to leave it. And again, plants are plants. They're going to figure out how to keep themselves alive. And they have for the most part. Um, as you can see, I just do have a small little corner of death so we can get started there. Um, but this is my sad Hoya Carry, which again, um, these were so popular, few years ago when everyone wanted a Hoya carry, and of course I got a single node, which is probably never going to grow, but she's staying alive, honestly. So I just keep her in this little like, um, like a tea light glass and I'll just like fill it up and bottom water her. But I did want to leave some of my sadness for you guys just to see. So um, I'm learning begonia or not for me. This was a begonia, um, as was the thing in the back which I'm going to move Miss Australis out of the way for right now. 
Um, yeah, these were begonias. What type of, I mean, this was a Rex begonia, that's for, for damn sure, but um, yeah, begonia and me do not mix. I, of course, had a, a few months there, a few weeks there where I was not taking care of my plants, uh, and the begonia clearly are not ones that can go drought tolerant, while Hoya uh, explode when you just basically neglect them. So, and that's not always the case, but yeah, begonia are not ones that I can manage as are these little Monstera Addisonii props. Honestly, these propagations, I don't even know why I took. I really don't care for Monstera Addisonii. You can see all the roots. Like this cup has been in there so long. Roots have just like circled the whole cup. I just feel bad. Um, I'm gonna toss these. I'm again, not going to feel bad about tossing plants that spark no joy or bring no joy. Plus they've just been taking up space in my cabinet as a dead plant. Um, so, you know, little things like that. But I will say I do have another Addisonii prop which is much healthier. Um, again, it does have some crispy dead leaves here, but she's been doing better. Um, it's one that I actually have to repot soon or do something with because roots are coming out, but, but I'm going to just stick this guy up here. Um, again, I like to keep my propagations more on this top shelf because then I'm forced to see them and look at them versus putting them on like the bottom shelf or something. Plus there's a lot more light uh, in that little top corner. And right here, I know I have to water her. Um, these are actually some propagations off of my Syngonium Alba, which is right here on this moss pole. Um, she has been burned a bit. She used to sit where this Neon Pothos was right here. Um, so she was getting scorched by that grow light. I was trying to see if I can get some variegation, which you can see the tiniest new leaf down here has absolutely no variegation. So I think yeah, I think these might just not have any like variegation in their DNA. I don't really know what to call the the makeup, the genetic makeup of a plant and what qualifies it to have variegation and what doesn't um, since it has been getting such high light, but totally fine. This is again, just going to be like a normal reverted syngonium, which I'm going to just treat like a syngonium. No problem with that. Um, but yeah, it's really cute to see a little baby leaf right there. So those I'm gonna keep right here up on top as well. Or if you've been following me on Instagram for a while, You'll remember that one of my first propagations I ever received in the mail was a Neon Pothos single leaf, which was actually this one um, that's bitten up sadly now, but it's it's super bittersweet. Like this was a plant, seriously, a one leafer that I got two years ago, and now I have like a tiny plant. So my cats actually got to this plant. It was potted up in soil. Um, I'm actually having a lot better uh, like success growing it in or kind of like propagating within sphagnum so i don't know if neon pothos just prefers sphagnum again it could be a case of me not just watering enough so uh, maybe adding some sphagnum into my soil mix when i move these to soil will be beneficial but these are super fun so i'm going to move these up here while i'm getting some more space for my propagations but yeah this is where like the meat and potatoes of my collection sits specifically my pride and joy or at least um, she should be my pride and joy, but she's been a little bit annoying lately, but that is my Syngonium elbow, and I will remove her from the cabinet so you guys can see her in all of her glory, but absolutely stunning plant, I can't lie. She keeps throwing out some pretty green leaves. Uh, this is the newest one, which is just starting to harden off, so hopefully the variegation will pick up on camera but it's very minimal. It's it's definitely like the more modeled, it gives me like the mojito vibe versus these like half moon uh, kind of like army camo looking variegation. So I'm still waiting for that. This was one of the newest leaves that came out super like in an interesting shape. Um, as you can see there, it, ooh, get out of the way. You can see there's some pretty decent variegation on that leaf. So I'm probably going to give this some more time. You can see some aerial roots really trying to climb out to the moss pole. Um, I'm probably gonna propagate this guy in a few weeks just to try and see if I can get some more variegation out of it. But yeah, either way, again, I'm going to treat it like the propagations up on that top shelf as a reverted elbow, if that's the case. But yeah, she's been doing really well. Again, I have to just figure out a better moss pole situation because it's leaning so hard, but she has been pretty happy so far. Um, I'm gonna put this on the floor for right now. But then in the back here, we do have another one of my Hoya, which is the Hoya Abavada. She's absolutely stunning. And I should say Hoya Abavada Splash, um, sitting in a 
terracotta planter that I potted or planted myself. Um, I do know that Hoya tend to have roots that really like to stick to terracotta planters and like anything that's kind of more porous. So I am a little bit worried about when it comes time to repot this plant and or pot it up with its propagations back here. Um, but we'll see. I'll definitely record that process. But she's been really happy so far. Uh, this is the newest leaf that she put out after I gave her a snip snip. And yeah very fun plant again hoya are just so fun because they're so versatile in all of their leaf shapes and the texture and the patterning so love a hoya because it just keeps me on my toes uh this is that same hoya like chelsea crimson queen i showed you guys before here we do have a stunning just like full white leaf which is super cool my first all white leaf which i know isn't ideal but on a whole pot of like green hoya it's totally fine uh, I have another Syngonium here in the back. This one is was sold as a Pink Illusion. I don't think that's right, but you let me know in the comments down below. She's pretty either way. But she also is definitely wanting more light. Her growth, or yeah, her new growth is coming in kind of small, but does have that pink veining, if you can see. So stunning plant either way, and she does kind of sit tucked in this little bottom corner. Pretty sure that was a spider mite. No! Okay, we're just gonna move on there, but <laughs> down here I do have my variegated string of hearts uh, propagations, I guess you can call them. I did have these being bottom watered last night, so I'm going to keep the little saucer underneath it just in case it decides to pee all over me, but yeah, this has been doing a lot better within the sphagnum. Um, I'm just going to unravel this to show you guys how much this plant has grown. You know, comment below if you have a way that you ideally do this so that it's like the headphones, right? Like we're just supposed to shake until they kind of like come apart. God. Anyway, you guys can kind of get it. Um, this plant has grown a lot. I'm not going to unravel her fully just to kind of like annoy her, but the growth has been getting so much bigger, which makes me a lot happier. Um, I don't know if you guys recall, but last time I was complaining about how these like hearts were coming in super miniature and small. Um, but now they've been coming in a lot bigger. Again, it just lives in sphagnum. I do water it with regular water as well as liquid dirt water. Um, but yeah, I have seen a lot of progress and success by just putting this plant in sphagnum um, and keeping it in my cabinet right here. It typically doesn't move and it's about like a foot and a half away from the grow light. So it's getting pretty decent light, but it's not, I guess, as intense as it probably should to get more of the coloring on the plant, but I'm honestly fine with how it looks. If you remember, this is our first philodendron micans propagation that we did together on YouTube or like on camera um, in a video. I can link that video up above, but she's been like, look at her. She makes me so happy. So if you guys have seen my latest video um, where I am again propagating Mama Mikans, these are from her. So it just makes me really happy to see, again, my plants becoming their own little plants, my propagations just really exploding and becoming big again. Like, look at this. She used to be so small and there was like a few leaves and now she's beginning to trail. Like she has these tiny little baby leaves coming in. Ah, oh, I just, I get really excited about plants, um, duh. Okay, and then the last two plants on this side of the shelf are my little maiden hair fern or rabbit's foot fern, I should say. Um, with the creepy crawlers. So this guy is still going. Um, honestly, like when these touch me, I get a little bit freaked out, I won't lie. So that just kind of creeped me out. But she's of course getting crispy and crunchy because what what else does a fern do but get crispy crunchy? Um, but she's still super lush green. So I think I'm doing something right. I probably do have to repot her eventually. Um, I don't know like if the root system is super like small and fragile. So I don't really want to shock it too bad, but yeah, it's super soft. It almost reminds me of like parsley. I don't know why, but very fun plant. Very different. It's one of my first syngonium, which are also semi-dead and in need of a good plucking and pruning of these dead leaves. But we're just going to ignore that for right now. This is, I believe, the syngonium white butterfly, I want to say. She's been doing good. Um, obviously, she could probably benefit from some more light because the growth is coming in smaller. Um, she is obviously thirsty because she's kind of like droopy and like not fun and 
you know, not perky. So I will give her a watering after this is done. But as you can kind of see in the back, I got to clean these shelves first while I have all the plants out. And lastly, we have this bottom shelf, which honestly, I'm not even sure what to like quantify this shelf as. Um, again, I had a lot of plans for this cabinet, one of which was to get some uh, more of those angled like corner shelves for this middle row so that I can have obviously like tall plants on the bottom that kind of just like continue to grow up um, would get some more growth lights so that there's more light obviously in the cabinet but still have not done that that probably will be a plan for future months coming up but while I am just down here it's reorganizing and cleaning a bit but I do have some English ivy down here. Um, this was all from propagation. So, you know, obviously this plant has a near and dear place to my heart, but I haven't had much growth lately. So I think it might be in too big of a pot, but it's fine for now. Um, I do have a little syngonium prop down here from the white butterfly, I wanna say. Um, oops, I'm trying to just tear off this dead leaf. Put it in my dead leaf cup. Do you have one of these too? Comment down below if you do. So that goes in there. But yeah, this little syngonium prop probably needs to be potted up with like the mommy plant. She is lean and hard. Um, and I don't have like a chopstick or anything to prop her. That should do for right now. Um, maybe I can squeeze this like here. Oh, she fell down again. Let me use another leaf to prop you up. Okay, so eventually I'm going to have to pot that up with the other syngonium up there. Um, but this is a bird's nest fern. There we go. That's where I got it from before. Um, she's also doing okay. She continues to give me new fronds, I suppose. Um, but obviously there are some leaves that are dying off and going yellow. So again, the nature of plants. And I'm pretty sure this one is due for a repot, but is that a root? This one probably could go for a repot, but she's been just sitting in this cover pot uh, with a bicycle on it for a little bit. So yeah, she's been doing okay down here. Um, not the most growth since it is the shelf that has the least amount of light, but you know, what can I do? Um, and then a Fitonia, which if you know, you know, they're very dramatic and fun. One day I was just in Home Depot and I saw it. And I know um, if you watch Becca Della Plants here on YouTube, um, she has like a very gorgeous, robust, big Fitonia. And I don't know why I thought this measly little thing would give me the same satisfaction that her large Fitonia gives her. Uh, definitely not the case. So don't know why I got it, but again, just keeping it alive for the sake of keeping it alive. Um, and I'm just going to wipe this shelf down while I'm down here. Um, I don't have anything on this paper towel except for just water. So I'm not introducing any type of chemical into the uh, cabinet, just keeping it very clean with the products I have around. Okay, so that was the whole cabinet, which now that I look at it, I definitely have some room um, to add more plants, specifically up here. So I'm just going to give you guys a closer look at the Hoya Australis. Um, she is definitely in need of a repot. She's been in this tiny plot planter for a while now, um, and she's been throwing out leaves left and right. So I think maybe she's in a good position now with that being her plant size. Um, but yeah, I am very happy to see the propagation corner over here. And speaking of propagations, I do have the Mikens from the previous video. If you have not watched it yet, I will link it above or somewhere on the screen. But these are the Mikens that we took some propagations of in that video if you have watched it. So keeping an eye on those, not much has been going on. This is the, let me take her out gently. This is the cup that had the most like baby props, I would call them. Um, and then there is the little node or the single node, which now that I think about it, I think I put her upside down the wrong direction. Um, but we will see when that time comes. Obviously we see some good humidity and condensation inside of the cup, but I'm not seeing any roots as of yet. We do have a node right there so we can keep a close eye there. But again, I am just keeping these in my little uh, terrarium, I guess, which I need to clean off, it's so dusty. Um, keeping it in the terrarium, which you can see is keeping the sphagnum pretty moist um, and it's right next to the window so they get pretty decent light. Um, yeah, so this, love having a little propagation box essentially. All right, guys, that is all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to 
bask in all that is my Ikea Redsta with me as well as my plant collection. I'm just happy I was able to take some time out of my day to give back to my plants, which I never thought I would be saying, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. Again, a huge thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Again, you can use my code FREE10 for 10% off of your purchase. I will also have a link down in the description below if you're interested. And of course, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.